Sorry. The lights are on. They stopped us. Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham Council for July 21st to order. Again, I apologize to members of the public for us starting a little bit late. We did have a meeting that was uh, ahead of this that went a little over, so I apologize to you and to the community. It has been... Uh, sorry, we will begin with an invocation led by Councillor King, followed by the singing of the National anth Anthem, which will be led by Councillor Papp. I would ask all who are able to rise. Lord, we give thanks for the town of Pelham as we meet to deliberate the matters of business on behalf of all people. Direct the members of Pelham Council through the paths of many decisions placed before them. May each council member show strength, wisdom, courage, and honor as they strive for goodwill in all their considerations. Amen. Amen. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all thy sons command, with bowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. It has been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Durley, that the agenda for the July 21st, 2014 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Are there any, there are a couple of proposed changes to that. And the first is that the staff report and bylaw following um, 722 be considered immediately following that. So 722 is the presentation regarding the Junior B hockey team. Is there a mover and a seconder to move those items up? Councillor King, Councillor Ribiak. So this amendment is to move those items up immediately following the presentation. I'll call the question on the amendment. All those in favor, any opposed, that amendment is carried. The next proposed uh, amendment is regarding the um, adding some bylaws to amend the zoning bylaw for 571 Poth Street and 523 Weber Road. And that would be at the presentation and consideration of bylaws portion of our meeting. I would ask that uh, Mr. C. I just want to comment on on this item, why that's being recommended by staff. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, there was a oversight. Uh, the director's on vacation, and they didn't get uploaded onto our call to order system. So uh, we felt it necessary to have these dealt with by council, and just asking to have them added to the agenda. Thank you. Is there a mover and a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Durley, Councillor Lane. And to that amendment, all those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Or the amendment is carried. Are there any other changes to the agenda? There be none. I call the question on the amended agenda. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried as amended. Thank you. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest. That is any conflicts of interest that any members may have. Do any members of council have any conflicts of interest that they need to disclose at this time? There are none, and I would ask the clerk to please include that in the minutes that none were offered. Now we move to a hearing of presentations, delegations, and the first is a public meeting. Pursuant to chapter D17, section 41 of the Drainage Act, a public meeting has been scheduled for the purpose to inform area landowners that Council will consider the Engineer's Report 207252 for the proposed incorporation of the Singers Corners Municipal Drain, which was initiated by a signed petition. A copy of the Singers Corners Drain Report branches B, C, D, F, and G 
prepared by Spreet Associates and dated June 30th, 2014, is available through the Office of the Clerk. Are there any members of the public present that would like to speak to this proposed um, drain to this engineer's report in relation to this public meeting? Thank you, sir. I'd ask that, that you come to the podium, say your name uh, and address for the record so that the clerk can have that. My name is Dave Berger. Uh, I'm at 1475 Rice Road, and it's um, uh, the B drain uh, as brought out in the report. Just to, to tell you, we've been taxpayers in Pelham for 20 years. Um, we grew along that drain and uh, saw it when it was like Niagara Falls, and then dry as dry in the summertime. So it, it's quite a significant drain. It's, mm -hmm. And it, it does have erosion on it uh, that's uh, eating away. Um, just as an observa observations, uh, our property, the Berger property, has 60 feet of ditch that crosses the property on the southwest corner. Um, there's also 450 feet of ditch that touches our property on the north side of, of the, the bank of the ditch. And erosion there is, is prevalent and it's eaten away into our property. And a, a great part of it <clears throat> has meandered onto our property. Mm -hmm. The other observation is um, Mr. Poolin's for the Poolin property. It's the south of us. It has 75 feet of ditch bank on the south side that touches his property. And also the Carpenter property has probably the most here. It's 600 feet of ditch bank and ditch that actually goes farther behind my property as well. <clears throat> now the engineering's report, engineer's report, uh, has given kind of a funny appraisal to all of these as far as the right-of-way that's mentioned in the report. The right-of-way is six meters so that uh, contractors can come in mm -hmm. and work on the ditch. Um, the Carpenter property has been allowed $3,740 in the appraisal. The property $7,220 for 75 feet. The Burger property, $320. This seems like a bit of an anomaly there. Uh, especially because we have to note that the access to our property is free and clear. The access to the Carpenter property and the Poulin property is a little more um, limited to the Poolin property by Rice Road, the Rice Road elevation is way above their property, <coughs> so it would be tough to bring in machinery. Uh, the access to the Carpenter property is available, but uh, difficult and enclosed with a fence and also re riparian plantings, as mentioned in the engineer's report. So uh, the general notes here on the drawing I'll just read uh, note number three. It says, all owners along the course of the drain shall make an access route from the nearest road to the drain location available to the contractor uh, in the amount of six meters there, mm -hmm. which is good. But all the more. So how was, uh, my questions have, have been this. How is the Burger property omitted and why as an access for the six meter route? Whereas it's, it's such an easy route to get in and repair the ditch. Mm. And why has every owner except the Burger residents there allotted a decent compensation for the access except the Burgers? $320 compared to $3,740 or whatever. And why are appraisal costs so high? We have to, um, on the engineer's report, you see that, um, 
on page 7. Um, the appraisal costs on this uh, on this whole deal here, for instance, on branch B, seven thousand dollars appraisal to do thirty five hundred dollars work, and uh, branch C, just to go there, the appraisal costs twenty eight fifty, an engineering survey report and inspection twenty seven ninety. So it's more for the appraisal than the engineering. Uh, that doesn't make sense either. either. Um, so some of that we kind of like explained. And also, um, just to bring out the Drainage Act, <coughs> uh, I keep mention, mentioning uh, 29, uh, Section 29 of the Drainage Act, and I quote, the engineer in the report shall estimate and allow in money to the owner of any land that is necessary to use for the construction or improvement of drainage works for the disposal of material removed from drainage works and an in in-site pumping station and on and on. Um, that's good. Well, that's good, but the engineering report here is not uh, nailed in stone. Um, if we go down to section 38, uh, it's called variation in assessments for maintenance and repair and it shows that the engineer can consider the cost equitable that the cost of the maintenance and repair of a drainage work be assessed upon a basis different than which the cost of its construction or improvement is assessed. The engineer shall determine and report the basis upon which the cost of maintenance and repair of drainage works or of any part or parts thereof shall be assessed. In other words, changes can be made to the engineering report. So that's all I have to say. Mayor Thank you very much, Mr. Berger. You you asked a few questions. I uh, wonder if Mr. Mantle might be able to address some of the questions in terms of access <coughs> uh, and also talk about next steps following this public meeting. Mr. Mantle? We have the drainage engineer here, John Spreet. Okay. He could probably speak to that probably better than I could. Oh, there's Mr. Sp Where's Mr. Spreet? You're right here? Okay, Mr. Spreet. Sure. Thank you for joining us. Would you be able to answer a few of the questions and let us know the next is steps? Gone? It is, yes. Oh, good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's been a process involved here. I'll try to, um, not to be too wordy, but some, maybe some of the other folks will want to hear all the answers. There's five different locations where there is a waterway or a water course that goes through private property. Uh, just some background, there's an East uh, Fawn Hill uh, development area. There's been some work done by, uh, uh, there's a petition signed by several of the developers. Uh, it's, it, the roll numbers of the properties are shown in the inside page, first page of the report. Mm -hmm. um, now, to, to allow for future, uh, for example, I'm familiar with some of the drainage in Pelham for now 20 some years um, and uh, Font Hill has a reason for sort of being on <coughs> the hill I suppose but the water does run off in a few directions and it goes downhill pretty quickly and that's to the south whether it's the Swayze drain or it goes to the um, to the west which is the Keenan drain which I'm very familiar with and that's still an issue not not the drain itself, but I think there's been some situations where uh, people are crying that. Uh, yeah, if you uh, could focus on this issue, Mr. Spreet, thank you. Okay, so we don't have to say more on that one. Um, so, so what what has happened here is with this petition, uh, there's not any construction planned, uh, any a huge amount. There is a, some blockages right now on the branch B. Uh, but there's not a lot of construction planned. We're on paper providing um, money allowance through an appraisal, and that's uh, we have the appraisal company. Uh, she is there's a Terry Ottaway, and they have done an, uh, appraisals for all properties through which this, these water runs. There's five of them would like to, would would need to be at least on paper made a municipal drain, uh, and whether. It, whether it's the Swayze or it's the Singer's Corners, the Singer's Corners started a long time ago in uh, 90, 
back in 97 in, in uh, Thorough. And there are some branches. These five water runs are tributary to that Singer's Corners, hence it's called Singer's Corner Drain because it's an extension. All these properties before have been assessed in the outlet, which actually lies down through Thorough. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here is we're, we're if not the traditional drainage report where we're actually building something, we're actually trying to, on paper, make some make a make a legal. There's an obligation for the municipality uh, to correct a problem if it is a municipal drain and there is a, a way of maintaining it and there is a plan to maintain it by. That's what the report is all about. Because if if there is no plan to address any problems downstream in any of your, your ratepayers that are here tonight to listen to this, you have no authority unless you have the bylaw, the bylaw to back it up to go in and fix the problem. So in this case, the maintenance is, is not assessed on an individual basis. In this particular case, it's, it's a block assessment. It's over the rateable lands and roads in mostly in Pelham and Font Hill that that if there needs to be two thousand dollars work spent or work done or some erosion or something on on the property, it's normally a municipal drain. If we get into the farmland and the Swayze and some of the other drains in the Kenyan Dane, these farmers actually have to have to end up uh, footing the bill for that. But this case here, it's a block assessment. There's a maintenance schedule for each drain, and mostly it's against the uh, Residential lands, the the built-up area, and this new built-up area, and any of the new ro any of the new roads and the existing roads, and including the the regional road. Rice Road is a regional road. So the purpose of the report is to legalize a corridor by which, uh, if we need to, and not unless we're asked to by any owner who may have a problem as a result of development XYZ and they perceive this as to be a major problem and we have the profile we can go back out the our drainage superintendent can go out and see what the problem is so so there was appraisals done and they vary in cost um, there was something mentioned about there's a variance in the cost of appraisals on page 7 and that's true so I have I'm not the appraisal expert. I'm the engineer that can come up with uh, what, what I think should be paid, but it, we thought it was prudent from the municipality's point of view to have an actual appraisal done. Those appraisals are here in the office. I have a copy with me today for all those properties. Um, the Berger property has a, a, a very small piece of, of uh, frontage at least where we have to have the ability to do a minor repair if we need to, but uh, the bigger part of the uh, properties through which these machines would have to travel uh, are all taken into account by the appraiser. Now, anything in this report is appealable, I guess. Uh, you know, we we may we're not we're not assessing the burgers any 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 money. We're not assessing uh, the tailors. Uh, the, there's, a, there's several folks here. Uh, now, Miss, Mrs. Carpenter has assessed a little bit of money. We, we assess the, the regional road. Uh, they, have, they have assessments in the back of this report. But it's due diligence that is trying to be done here that when the water does in the future run, run and continues to run through the pathways of the new development on the east side, west side of... Uh, of the uh, Rice Road and up and, and some of the water coming from up even maybe up to Pelham Street almost. Mm -hmm. So okay thank, thank you Mr. Speed I was hopeful that you could I appreciate your pricey on on the entire document so hopefully you could answer some of Mr. Berger's uh, so, concerns you've done that a little bit in terms of access. Um, so the access if, if there is no note on the plan so for Mr. Burger's benefit, if there's no access note on the plan, then we have to indicate that under the bylaw th that an owner that wants a repair or whatever done has to provide an access. Well, 
Yes, Mr. Berger has an access that is easy to get down. Mr. Poulin has a, has a uh, grass right up to roadside. But that doesn't mean that a small excavating, mini excavator, some kind of a machine or a track machine can't go down and there's a little bit of restoration work involved. So everybody is expected to have an access as needed. But that's a call for your drainage superintendent as to exactly how, and they will do it with not making any more damage than they have to. But we need an access from the nearest road lounge and, and there is one there from Rice Road. We just don't tell them where it is. It's somewhere along the property, mm -hmm. close to the ditch normally. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speed. I think that answers some of Mr. Berger's questions uh, can, and, and provides an I overview. I don't know through the mayor. I, I mean, I, I, could answer, I could answer some of the questions if, if there was a supplementary question. Uh, but <coughs> what we're here tonight for is for Council to hear comments or yes. questions, obviously, uh, and then at the end of the day or at the end of the night, are we going to uh, send the report back to the engineer for changes? This is this is one of the options that happens tonight, and it, it, it's the right of the owners to ask, uh, or at least it, it's up to me to try to defend what what has happened consultations or whatnot, even though Mr. Berger wasn't consulted the same manner as, as the other people, he actually, actually, we found out because of a property low, a property that he abuts on the drain is completely different than uh, the registry office plan that I have, and I will share that with Mr. Berger if he had liked my plan, but that's where, where this access, this uh, right away and whatnot came from. It's, it's not just okay. a simple matter. Okay, thank you very much, okay. Mr. Street. Now, I'm going to open the floor now to others who may want to uh, address council, other members of the public who have questions, concerns, uh, point of view they want to uh, give to us as part of this public meeting. Are there any other members that would like to come forward? Would you please come forward and give us your name and address, please, for the record? Good evening. It's uh, Jerry Mose, Rice Road Greenhouses, 1361 Rice Road. I just wanted to know if really if this assessment is set in stone tonight or is this just a, a, a work in progress? Mr. Mantle? Okay, Mr. Spreet, can you please stand up? Well, and well um, believe it or not, when I have these drain meetings, they are sort of interactive. They're a public participation, but I, I, I should really try to answer your question. Okay, please go ahead. Yes or no? Is it is it is it, is it, is it something we, we can do? With? We haven't assessed you. Okay, you that's fine. Okay, money. okay, it's not assessed. Okay, is it a one-time fee or is it a yearly fee? No, no we're, your your name, Rice Road Greenhouses is in here. And may I just? And I know, I know that. Okay. Is it is it a one-time fee or is it? Uh, so. You need one-time payment to you? Yeah. Oh, just one time. Okay. The other thing I want to ask is if I want to reclaim some land for as I expand, hopefully, uh, can I culvert that over properly? And does that does someone pay for it or do I pay for that? Can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Can I put a culvert over, over these areas to, to create more land? Because right now it's lost land. Right. Mr. Spreet? Okay. How does that work? Okay. Is there um, a process for that? Your property has some culvert that you have put in that used to be an open. You had uh, access driveways. I've been all through your property. I've met you out there, or at least yep. some of your staff. Yep. So now, if at this point in time you have put, uh, since the start of the project, quite a, quite a chunk of used pipe in the ground in your property. Now. If there should be a repair required to that pipe, it should collapse at a certain point somewhere over the coming years. Uh, there would be, there, there's a method you can say, you can fix it yourself, or you can say to the municipality, I, I want that piece of pipe fixed, and then there's a mechanism that you would pay some of it, and the upstream area would pay some of it. Fair enough. But if you want to put any more culvert in, that you would have to request that. And, and it would have to be done through a secondary report to legalize the fact that 
you want to eliminate more ditch and then you, you obviously get more land. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rose. Thank you. Others? You want to add, that's our draining superintendent wants to add to that, is that correct? This is uh, Mr. Jackson. Thank yeah. you for joining Brent us. Jackson, drainage superintendent for the township. Uh, what we can do is discuss uh, through you, uh, Mayor, is uh, we can put in agreements with landowners to put in culverts. So let's say uh, you can set a limited time for that crossing to be in. They pay for the material, we do the work, or they pay for the whole crossing, but it belongs to them. It's their property. And at the end of the agreement, if they no longer want the culvert there, then they have to remove it and restore the ditch to the way that it was. So we can set up agreements through council with property owners who want to add accesses. Okay, thank you. So there's there's another option there, Mr. Rose. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Jackson. Are there others that would like to uh, ask some questions or give some comment? Would you please come up to the podium and I'd ask that you remove your hat, please, sir? Thank you. And your name and address again for the record you've been here before so go ahead sir yes mayor um, my name is Paul Taylor 1281 Rice Road uh, just a quick question um, in regards to the maintenance that's to be done I believe the report says 75 25 in other words we pay 75 the town or the town pays 75 we pay 25 of the maintenance is that correct or well let's look at the if it schedule. needs and to be you cleaned. are not branch F correct uh, Taylor Yes, I know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, what I, I, mentioned, I mentioned. May I just go ahead, Mr. Street, please. Branch S. Okay. <clears throat> you see, let me let me just look at the plan. <clears throat> and I don't know if I should move this over. So this is for maintenance. And I'm looking for a branch B. Yeah, it's right here. Now, as far as that goes, any maintenance that would be done on your place, it, we wouldn't have anything to do with any culverts. If there was some kind of a block, then your place several times too. So if we have, as a result of development, it could be five years down the road, 10, bearing in mind the stormwater management, and maybe it'll be a, a less peak flow through your property. However, I don't specifically show you as being assessed for maintenance here. I'm saying that if there's maintenance on F, it's, it's to be paid for 86% to the town of Powell, which involves the rateable properties, and uh, Rice Road, ten percent, and uh, okay, and roads and power. Okay, I, my wife asked me to ask, so I'm, okay, I'm doing it. Okay, <laughs> you are in, you're you a good man, sir. Because, because Mr. Taylor, he, you're very. Good. He has no culverts, but Mr. Jackson would be correct in saying if if you wanted to go and now pipe these. I'm things, glad I clarified it. Thank you. Okay. All right. That that could, that could lead to, you know that could lead to an expense. We're not. We're we're <clears throat> we're allowing you money as opposed to surveying an easement, which could cost. I, I get the money. whole allowance piece. Okay. I just wanted to check on the maintenance piece. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Spreet. Are there others? Any others that have questions? Thank you, sir. Please come forward. State your name and address. Uh, Ron Fulton, 1471 Rice Road. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, once they come on the property and clean out the ditches, quite, 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 quite sorry, pooling. Pooling. Thank you. There's quite a bit of stuff in the ditch. Uh, uh, I worked for the city of Wallen before, knowing, yeah, you can get it out of there with a uh, excavator. Uh, the total reinstatement of the property would be done shortly after, or it would sit there for for quite a while after. Yeah. And and when would this uh, this should be cleaned out by the end of the year or by the end of September or is there a time frame on, on when it would be done? I think that question is more appropriate for Mr. Jackson. Is that correct, Mr. Spree? Well, uh, there, uh, we, you would like to stand up, please. Made, made very good points. Can you I stand up, please, Mr. Spree? wanted to clarify. Thank you. We're, I don't know if you looked at the report, but 
there are some pipes that someone in the past has put little diameter pipes that the water goes in the one and out the other and washes over the top and so on. We're actually just wanting to take those out of there. Yeah, I agree. Okay, because it should, it can be improved. Yeah, my question is, but, so, so the question uh, is, would, would you come in there with an excavator and haul them out to the road, or would you have trucks go down there to haul them on? Or? Well, whoever's going to do it, there, there is, there is costs allowed in here for doing that work. Okay. Again, not paid for by you folks. It's paid for by the the, the uh, area that's assessed upstream. Yeah. And that would be under the supervision of the drainage superintendent or myself. The idea is to get rid of those concrete blocks that are making yep. the water flip around and, and erode your property a bit. Yep. And we don't want to tear all H-E double stick out of the place. You know, we don't, we don't want to tear all hell out of the... Uh, we, we want to at least clean it up to the point, uh, get rid of those pipes which are no help at all, and it would be they would be taken away and disposed of. Okay. Is there a time frame to do that? Oh, Mr. Jackson, can you maybe you can answer that or or is it a general question, Mr. Poulin, of, of if you if you do the work, how long will it take? How, you know, he's probably wondering how unsightly his property would be, etc. Well, when it would start is this this has to go through a process of consideration. There has to be a bylaw passed. There there are appeal processes. Yep. If it doesn't get held up, it would be done. Uh, later on in September. Yeah. Okay, now, would we be notified of when the oh, yeah. is okay. Mr. Jackson, will, in terms of notification? That's uh, part of a process that uh, I'll manage myself. And, you know, okay. We have sprinkler heads down there for the sprinkler system, and I don't want no machines just start running over. Well, them, exactly. No, no. It's, con it's, it's a process that the municipality <coughs> on basis, you say, show me everything that you have concerns about. Uh, how can we do this, do that? You know? Yeah. Okay. I don't care how to get on the property. There's room, there's room to get on there. That's okay. not a big problem. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Poulin. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Spreet. I don't want to you may want to speak. Mr. Jackson, though, you made a couple of good points before, so do you have any? Okay. Thank you. Are there any others? Please uh, come forward with your name, address. Rice Road, and I, uh, I'm on Branch B uh, and C. Uh, I just was is interested in. Um, it says damages, uh, seven hundred dollars damages. I just wanted to know what that meant okay. and what that um, was. Okay, Mr. Spree. Yes, thank you. Um, I talked several times with Mrs. Carpenter, and she has spent money on plantings. Environmental plantings, and I asked you how much that it had cost you. Oh, that's the eleven hundred dollars, and I'm and I'm giving you, you know, because we we have to <coughs> if we have to go in, but we're going to try to be as careful as possible. There still could be. Well, we're not going to we're going to put a culvert in your place. We're not really going to tear up the property, but to recognize the fact that if we have to do some work. I've given you, I think, about 700 and yes. some dollars on each branch for to, because of this money you spent for your environmental plantings and the specialty stuff. You gave me the bill and everything for it, and that's what that's for. Oh, okay. I didn't know what damages meant. Okay. Well, well that's what that's for. They haven't that's happened yet, but they may happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, for, that's, for, that's, for, that's for, you know, um, if I get a phone call one day and say, what are you doing out here? Uh, oh. Sorry, didn't know that particular bush or something. Like we, we well, it, it, that does but lead me to Mr. another Jackson, question. Mr. Okay. Jackson would be the one. Now, Harold Kelly's not here anymore, but Mr. Jackson is a competent uh, drainage superintendent. So. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Speet. Ms. Carpenter, go ahead, please. Um, that does lead me to another question. For example, if there is uh, flooding um, a, into the ditch, and, and it does now, and I imagine if we put a lot more concrete on the other side of the road, there, the flow might be um, increased as well. And if all of the work gets done up until the end of our property, hmm. And we're on the thor the then it goes into Thorold and it floods back. Who does who's who, what happens then? Like if Thorold's not doing anything, we do all the work at the end of ours, yeah. 
and the end of that imaginary line, it gets all full with crap and it backs onto our property. Mr. Spreet? Well, I had a question similar to that. Go ahead. If, if at the point where the, it drops, well, first of all, Right now, if, if the develop, when the development happens and happens over time, the stormwater management ponds that are going to be built are going to lessen the peak flow that goes down through your property and they will lessen the debris that comes down through the property because they'll get into the pond first and there's a slow release out of the ponds. But if you have a blockage right where it stops to go into thorough, yeah. Pelham has the authority to pull that blockage out, even if it means going another 15 feet or so. Whatever they can reach with the machine, you can reach 20 feet with the machine. But if if you if there is a major blockage in thorough downstream, then you would have to speak to them or or in consultation with with the drainage superintendent from Pelham and Thorough. They would make every attempt to solve the problem there. Who's, whose expense is that? Like, Wouldn't do I go to yours. Pelham? Do I go, what happens when the flood's on my property? Well, when the flood's on, it depends on the, the event, the, the flood. If there's, if there's no stormwater management in place, you could get a four or five inch rain and there'll be a lot of material, but mm. the part in Thoreau that isn't municipal drain, they didn't want to be part of this report. Right. You would have to complain, or there would have to be deliberations had between Pelham and Thoreau, and if it was such a case, you could ask for the drain to be extended to take care of that problem. And that's the only other matter. We have no control over the people downstream, but if we are getting flooding, like your property, upstream, the Drainage Act is there to be used and we can go downstream and again it would be at the expense of the of the roads and the rateable lands in in pelham so you're you're not going to ever come out with uh, big dollars on on this well, how about any dollars any dollars <laughs> yeah. well you're not assessed individually any dollars well you 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 are assessed the fact that you have some rateable property but it's not going to be a lot of money compared to everybody else upstream and, and I, I'm going to hazard to say that we would work when a clean-out occurs or should that occur, then we would want to work with our neighboring municipality to World. ensure that it's, you know, if there's a clean-out in Pelham, it doesn't make any sense to just let it sit there, right? right. So we would want to work with the neighboring municipality. No, I, I guess I was trying to get at whose responsibility is that when we know the floods in Thorold yeah. and I have this sort of arrangement with Pelham. Who do I go to? Do I go to Pelham and then you deal with Thorold, or is that my problem? Mr. Jackson's nodding his head. Mr. Jackson, can you come forward just so people can hear you? Uh, through you, Your Worship. Uh, and to address the, the question, uh, if any resident of Pelham has drainage issue, uh, it should be directed through myself. Um, and then from there we can filter out whether it's a roads issue, whether it's a neighboring municipality issue, uh, and it's really up to us to provide that service for the residents. Thank you. Mrs. Well Carpenter, said. thank you. <laughs> I'm not a drainage superintendent. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Street. Others? Any others? Going twice? Going thrice? Okay, thank you. I call this... Uh, this public meeting closed. Um, so thank you very much for your participation. We'll be considering that. I Council, I wonder if we should move that up. Um, so is there, Councillor Papp, would you be able to, uh, to uh, mo a motion to move that forward? Right. Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Lane, that we amend the agenda so that we move that item forward. And... Um, Actually, we're to deal with that item now, are we not? Is that correct? Mr. Yeah. CEO? <coughs> Actually, we're supposed to deal with that now. So I do have the motion, but I would recommend a different motion. Um, that we have heard some feedback tonight. The motion is to receive and approve. Um, 
what I what I'd recommend, and it was an option that Mr. Spreet suggested, based on some of the feedback we have, there are some questions, for example, from Mr. Berger and others that probably need to be addressed. Um, that I would suggest, and I see councillors nodding, that that we receive the report and that staff be directed to prepare a recommendation report right. based on the Singers Corners Drain report and this public meeting this evening, yep. mm -hmm. to be considered at a at a later <clears throat> time. So, Councillor uh, Ribiak and Councillor Durley, you initially moved the entire recommendation. Would you be comfortable moving that recommendation? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it's been moved by, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, it's been moved by Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley, that the Singers Corners Drain Report, branches B, C, D, F, and G, prepared by Spreet Associates and dated June 30th, 2014, be received, and that staff be directed to prepare a recommendations report based on the Singers Drainers Drain Report and the public comments received this evening. That will come at a subsequent uh, council meeting for our consideration. Uh, included in that, of course, is recommendation that these these questions will be answered okay any comments questions on that do members of council have any questions they'd like addressed in that based on what we heard this evening are we prepared to to, to uh, approve that I will call the question all those in favor any opposed that motions carried and we look forward to that report coming and uh, would encourage you to have com further conversations with Mr. Spreed or Mr. Jackson should you have any questions. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming this evening. And uh, we will look forward to that report coming in the future. Thank you very much. Yes. So just take a second here as members uh, of the public leave. Members of Council have also asked uh, that in future perhaps a planning meeting date would be the date that we address these types of issues as opposed to a council meeting. So we'll do that in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Have it at a planning meeting or a public meeting, an open house might be more appropriate than a council meeting. Absolutely. Thank you. Now we'll move on with the remainder of our agenda. So uh, first we have uh, Station 3 Replacement Committee presentation and update on the construction of the fire station number 3. Uh, members who are here for the earlier part, you can please stay if you want, uh, members of the public, but your issue is it will be dealt with in the future, but please stay here. Uh, it's uh, Mr. Sorry, District Chief uh, Jim Waldeck, uh, Glenn Harrison and Dave Kazan are here to present. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us and thanks for your patience. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, it was a little, little while ago we uh, had our initial get together. We talked about uh, where we were going to go with our new hall, uh, talked about land ac acquisition and things like that. Uh, since then, we've made a lot of great progress. Um, Paula Park, our administrative assistant at Station One, prepared our uh, PowerPoint presentation for you tonight, so we're going to go through it. Um, and if there's any questions at the end, we can do our best to uh, answer them for everybody. Uh, but basically, uh, these these uh, slides will give you uh, uh, an inside uh, idea as to where we are to date with uh, the progress of the hall. Um, talking about the the. Uh, weather that we've had recently over the last few months, uh, we were still able to get out there, get our uh, contractors going and start the excavation. Uh, this, they leveled the land, stripped off the topsoil. They were able to put essential services in place. <laughs> I, I believe they're talking about the security fence that you see off to the left. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Uh, once everything was leveled, uh, they were able to start putting in the footings. Once the footings were in place, uh, forming of the walls began. And now that the forms have pulled off, this is what the, uh, the walls look like. This is the, the main uh, apparatus bay area that you're looking at. Uh, after the forms were taken care of, uh, backfilling was, uh, had taken place so that uh, the drainage could uh, occur properly off of the, uh, the building site. 
Now the, the framers have arrived and they're going to start doing their job. A uh, septic bed was installed as well. You can see the, all the uh, drainage uh, tile there in place. Uh, the framing of the walls uh, taking place here. And they built those on site, a lot of them right on site there and lifted them up? Yes, uh, a lot of them were already uh, put together, ready to go. So these, uh, we, will, uh, we will say that the, the, uh, all of the contractors uh, have been showing up to work. Everything's going very well according to uh, our, primary. all the sub-trades have uh, been showing up and, and everybody's been flowing along very well, working very hard. Uh, things are going very well so far. Uh, that was, sorry, that was inside the training room. And now, now that the, the main section is put up, uh, they're ready for trusses. Uh, the trusses are going up. This is looking at the front of the building, uh, the vestibule area, and the offices off to the left-hand side. The apparatus bays are off to the right. Uh, look at the uh, roof trusses from inside the truck base. Uh, this is the back area, the rear of the kitchen. Um, there's an overhang that will allow the firefighters to uh, hold any type of um, social functions or fundraisers that they want to have outside, just outside of the back of the kitchen there. The front view uh, front of the fire hall, you can see now the sheathing for the, uh, the roof and the walls are in place and it's ready for shingles. Uh, and I will say the, uh, the shingles have actually, uh, if you look at the, uh, the, tra the training area off to the left hand side, I was by there today, the contractors were up there actually uh, applying the shingles today. Um, we've also uh, picked the color for the siding as well, so hopefully that's on its way. Again, the rear view area of uh, the kitchen, now that the sheathing on the roof and the walls have been completed. Uh, inside the truck base. Um, and one thing uh, just to notice as well, it's maybe hard to see in some points, um, because of the post-disaster design, the, <coughs> it's a two by six frame construction with 12 inch centers. You can see there that it's very sturdy looking, should uh, withheld, uh, with, uh, hold up to uh, the bad weather quite well. And certainly we hope the trucks fit. <laughs> I didn't put that in there. We have a guarantee, don't we? <laughs> All our trucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, the good news: we are on schedule. Uh, we've talked with. The, uh, we've been able to keep in touch with our contractor. Uh, all the sub trades, are, like I said, are are uh, working very well together. We're on budget. Okay. And it, it's presented, this was presented by the Pelham Station 3 Committee with ordinary talent and extraordinary perseverance, all things are possible or attainable. And basically that's the presentation. Thank you very much. I would say it's an extraordinary talent. As well, well. So I, th thank I like you. to think that we've we been able to create a synergistic effect with, with all of our efforts put together that we are doing a very good job of, of it because it's a lot of work. I, can, I, think, I, speak for, I think I speak for our group that... Um, there's a lot of time involved in this, and we can certainly appreciate everybody's, uh, everybody's position and what they have to be responsible for to make this happen. Thank you, Mr. District Chief, for your presentation. Appreciate that. Uh, do members of council have any questions for our presenters? Or uh, We certainly appreciate, uh, on, behalf of, yep. on behalf of council, we certainly appreciate your efforts. Uh, it, it is going above and beyond the call of duty, as they say, uh, because your involvement and your shepherding this through on behalf of your colleagues uh, both now and in the future um, and this really is for residents in the North Pelham area and and you're always thinking about their well-being so thank you very much for your efforts on this for presenting this is a, absolutely a great news story and uh, we look forward to uh, future <coughs> updates and we look forward to that uh, opening in the fall so we're on schedule for that and I think I forget the date that you had said but uh, October 10th October 10th it's the day of the opening, and we're still on schedule for that. So thank you very much, Mr. District Chief, and also Glenn Harrison and Dave Kazan for your presentation and for your hard work and oversight on this.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It has been moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the Station 3 Replacement Committee presentation be received for information. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And again, we appreciate you presenting to us an update, and we look forward to future updates. Thank you. The next item is uh, Mr. Toffolo regarding the Junior B hockey team relocation to Pelham. Thank you very much for joining us. I think oh, the clerk's going to uh, assist to get a presentation up here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, and staff, and uh, public for having me here tonight. Um, wanted to give uh, everybody a brief overview of uh, Junior B Hockey um, in the Niagara Peninsula. Um, first, I'll start a little bit with uh, the history um, of Junior B Hockey and the Ontario Hockey Association. The Ontario Hockey Association is one of the oldest um, hockey associations in Ontario. It started back in the late 1890s. Um, several communities um, in the Niagara Peninsula have had uh, OHA teams. Um, started off in Kingston, Toronto, and Ottawa, and Lindsay, and then branched off into all kinds of other um, communities within Ontario. Um, in 1915, uh, Captain Jim Sutherland became the president of the Ontario Hockey Association. Sutherland was instrumental in uh, dedicating his life to helping Canadian communities recognize and preserve the heritage of our winter sport, hockey. After Sutherland's death in 1955, the OHA named the Junior B uh, Cup, uh, the Sutherland Cup, the highest prize in the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League. And that is the cup that all 27 teams in the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League play for currently right now. Um, today, as I said, the, o the GOJHL boasts 27 teams over the Niagara region and southwestern Ontario. What uh, junior hockey brings to a community is, a big part of it is community spirit. Gives the community something to rally around, um, gives kids in the community um, and everybody just that that positive thing to go and watch, see, and kids can aspire to become a junior player and to move on in hockey. Um, it also <laughs> provides, you know, a, a, the opportunity for kids to showcase themselves um, for uh, Division One, Division Three, Major Junior A opportunities uh, to continue playing as well. In the playoffs as well, um, and sometimes in regular seasons, a lot of the buildings uh, are, are really full, and it brings a lot to the community as far as revenues that come in, as people that come in and visit the community. Um, junior hockey, what our team, what the team usually supports in the communities. Um, we do a lot of things as food, for, such as food drives, hockey school, breakfast and reading clubs at schools, charity fundraisers, volunteering in the community, at all different kinds of events. Um, in the past, um, a lot of centers have brought in uh, the GOJHL Showcase uh, All-Star Game as well as the Prospects Game. Um, that's something that uh, a community can, uh, community and the team can bid for and host. Um, junior hockey also promotes sportsmanship in a community. Um, Junior hockey, we promote fair play, respect for the opponents, polite behavior in sports and competition. Um, these traits are often uh, what the young, young adults bring into their later lives. And a lot of these young adults become very successful parts mm -hmm. of our communities. Uh, player advancement. Um, it, we, we've been fortunate enough over the years to see uh, many, many players um, go on. One of the, one of the latest uh, 
things that's happened uh, with the organization is Ben Vanderklok, who started coaching with us in 2003. Um, he coached for us for two and a half years before he moved on to Brock University and the Niagara Ice Dogs, is now the head goalie coach with the Nashville Predators. So we're very proud of, of that accomplishment that Ben has. Uh, we've also had many other players uh, continue on and play minor pro, play in Europe, Division One, Division Three, the OHL, um, and even the AHL. So it's something that uh, um, a lot of kids can aspire to. Not everybody can make it, but a lot of kids uh, can have the opportunity to continue their hockey, um, as well as in CIS. So that's just a, a brief overview on um, the hockey team and uh, Junior B Hockey, um, what it can bring to a community. Um, I believe there's a lot of economic development that can happen um, with bringing a team into town um, through tournaments that we've run in the past, through <coughs> hockey schools. Um, just the fact that a lot of people come into the community um, that we recruit in, we recruit in a lot of kids and their families end up looking at an area and saying, hey, we really like it here. And uh, a lot of times uh, families will end up moving here and, uh, and spending uh, you know, their retirement here or even, uh, the, you know, before retirement lives. So it's uh, something that uh, we're very proud of and we're proud uh, uh, to show the city and uh, hopefully uh, enter into a, a great long uh, partnership with the city of, with the town of Pelham. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Toffolo, for your presentation. I wonder if any members of council have any questions for you? Councillor Durley? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to Mr. Toffolo. I did ask this question earlier, but I'd just like to ask it again. Uh, we're, you're anticipating staying here to move into the new building if, it's, if and when it is built. Uh, are you willing to work with, uh, with other groups or by yourselves in order to raise some funds in order to, uh, to promote this building and to ensure that you have the home that you would like to have when, when we do get into the new building? Yes, yeah, certainly we would like to be actively involved in a partnership with the city, minor hockey and any other groups um, to be uh, a big part of uh, the new facility and uh, making it a, a great place for uh, the town of Pelham to be proud of. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Mayor Vance has you saying city a lot. It's, we're, we're just a town here, so you can say the town of Pelham. So thank you we'll very much. We'll get there. Councillor. Just one more quick question, Mr. Tomflow. How many imports do you carry a year? Uh, usually we're allowed seven imports. Um, at the beginning of a season. Now, um, the import rules, if somebody plays for us, played for us last year and there was an import, um, they don't count as an import anymore. But it's seven new imports in any given year. Okay. How many do you carry? Uh, it it average, all depends on, on the year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Other members of Council with questions for Mr. Toffolo? Mm -hmm. Comment. Comment? Comment, another question. Well, it's supposed to be question time. The comments uh, we can take under the presentation. Thank, thank you. I, Go I, ahead. I can always uh, finish my, my comment by, by raising my voice and it'll sound like a question. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, just wanted to congratulate you on the, uh, on, on, on the presentation that you made. But also uh, thank you for um, uh, the flexibility that you showed uh, through uh, through the negotiation process. We hear reports, of course, uh, I know you negotiated with, with staff. And I'm really pleased that uh, there are great opportunities in this, this uh, contract for both you and the town, as well as protections for both you and the, the town in the event of any challenges that should occur. So I want to thank you for that. We're very appreciative that those were all built into the contract. Thank you, or thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Any comments on that, Mr. Yeah, on, on that note, I'd like to thank uh, the staff of uh, the town of Pelham and council members. I mean, it, the staff has been great. Um, it's really been uh, really encouraging to uh, to work with everybody so far. So we're very very pleased and very excited. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments that almost form into a question, Councillor Papp? I think you had you had something. Well, more of an operational question. As I mentioned before, that the integrity of our town and working with you is of vital importance. That we ensure that <coughs> the kids here have an opportunity to become part of the team. So the question is pretty straightforward. Um, if things work out with the agreement and that, how does, from a standpoint, uh, how do you go about recruiting the kids? What 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 just give us a brief idea of what happened. Well, we've the uh, season starts yeah. when the middle of September. 
Season starts uh, second weekend in September. Right. So um, what happened? We would, we would start tryouts in August. Uh, we've been in contact with, uh, you know, with Pell and Minor Hockey. Okay. Obviously, they're they, they're going to be a, a big part of working together with us so that we can inform all the Pelham kids that um, we're going to have tryouts so that they can attend. Um, last year, we had uh, two Pelham boys playing for our hockey club. Spencer Fox and Tyler um, played for us last year. So um, we, uh, we really are excited to um, have the Pelham boys on the ice, and uh, we're getting excited about uh, having some of them play for the hockey team. Okay, thank you. That's fine. Any further? Nothing further. Any other members of council? <clears throat> Question? Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. And I, with leave of council, I do see um, Byron Sinclair here, who's representing the uh, Pelham Minor Hockey. Would you like to just say a few words about Pelham Minor Hockey Association's uh, views on the on the possibilities here, Byron? Up here or, uh... Yeah, please, if you don't mind. Thank you for being with us this evening. Well, this was, uh, this happened, my name is Byron Sinkler, Pella Minor Hockey Association, I'm the president. This, uh, this movement of Port Coburn's uh, Pirates into Pelham is a, is, a, is a great idea. The Pella Minor Hockey Association supports this venture. It would be nice to see some Pelham kids, obviously, on this team. Um, I know I've talked to a few players that I think can make this team and told them about the tryouts and that, and... I think you had some yesterday. Yes. And uh, and the dates will be probably, you know, put forth to the Minor Hockey Association uh, for future tryouts and that too. Uh, the uh, the executive is totally in agreement and in support of this uh, movement, and uh, we'll be behind you with with whatever you need. And uh, hope all the best, and I hope to see some talent kids on the team. Awesome. Thank you very much, Great. Mr. Sinclair, for your presentation and for your comments. Any questions for Mr. Sinclair? Thank you very much, Byron. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Toffolo. I do have a, a motion here to receive the presentation. It's been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Drelia, that the presentation by Tim Toffolo regarding the Junior B hockey team relocation to Pelham be received for information. Any other comments from members of council at this point? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Council, we did resolve to uh, move up the items. And so it has been moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Papp, that the issue summary report Pelham Pirates license agreement be received, and that Council consider the bylaw as amended and associate, actually the bylaw and, and associate agreement as amended, scheduled later on this evening, and that Council approves the rental of a temporary trailer to be used as the Pelham Pirates change room at a cost not to exceed $22,240. Per, well, for this season. For this season. Mr. CEO, can you just speak to that? Uh, the, sorry, the change room part or the The, the, the uh, change room part, the agreement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> As Mr. Toflo indicated, this has happened rather quickly and staff has um, uh, worked uh, to put together an agreement to uh, present to council. Um, the essence of the agreement is that um, the team would f function out of the existing arena uh, for this coming season and the season after. The understanding is that um, the, the council will move towards uh, the potential construction of a new facility that would be opening in 2016. So if the council moves ahead, then um, the team agrees to commit to an additional <laughs> five-year lease um, in the new facility uh, for a total of seven years. And if there is construction delay, et cetera, that can be extended to eight. So this gives us a long, longer-term uh, sustainable team that can be uh, developed uh, and that can be um, showcased in the community and build that culture and pride uh, around uh, junior B teams has been that has been um, presented tonight. Um, as far as the change room facility, the change room facility will be um, a temporary um, trailer. Uh, we don't have space in the existing arena, so the idea would be the trailer would be a, a permanent or sorry, a, a non-permanent change room facility for the team uh, until new facilities are constructed and that it would be located uh, fairly close to the existing temporary staff room and the players would access the arena through that. 
Um, and uh, as well, the team will be operating the concession for this season as well, which is a benefit to the community or to the town. Uh, and it reduces our operating expense for the arena. Um, and that, that's more or less the highlights, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and just in terms of ICE uh, rental? Um, in, in, the, in the agreement that, uh, that uh, is before you, there is the expectation that there will be one home game per week. Uh, that will be typically Fridays. If there's an alternative time, that has been identified as Tuesday. Uh, the team will pay uh, the town's rate for ICE <coughs> rental. Um, and um, that has been, again, worked with. We have had discussions with Fire Hockey and the Niagara Figure Skating Club to figure out how that would happen. Uh, so it's about, I think it's five and a half hours a week of ice time uh, that, the, that the team would require, and that will be made up through adjusting the, the schedule uh, in, in consultation with Figure Skating and, and Meyer Hockey. Okay, thank you, Mr. C.A.O. Questions, comments from members of council? on the report before us. Um, I, I'm going to say uh, similar to what I said in the paper in terms of uh, the potential that this offers for the community. And I certainly appreciate the perspective that uh, Mr. Sinclair brings forward. It is a, a great uh, opportunity for Pelham. It's a great opportunity for Pelham minor hockey. It's, uh, it's a great potential for our community. Um, and it does, as Councillor Ribiak indicated, uh, does protect the interests of the community, of the town. It protects the interests of uh, Mr. Toffolo. And, and more than that, this, is, this, is, this agreement is, as I see it, members of council, it's, it's, a, it's for the longer haul. Uh, it's, it's not a year to year. It's, uh, it's for a commitment to the community for a, a longer period of time. Seven years, we heard, possibly eight. Um, and we think we've put together an agreement that will work uh, mm -hmm. during that duration, one that's flexible, um, that uh, re regarding what we're planning to do or the potential for a new facility, and uh, there's eventualities built into the agreement. Um, I do want to reiterate what Councilor Rubiak said, that Mr. Toffolo has been very, very amenable uh, to this uh, with some of the last minute uh, toing and froing on the agreement, again, to make sure that, uh, that all items are taken care of and that um, you know, the public interest is, uh, is taken care of. But I do want to underscore this great potential uh, that it has for our community going forward. The uh, Pelham Pirates, and the, maybe the, the name will change as things go forward, um, but, but it'll be known uh, hopefully as a, as a way for some of our youth, as Councillor Durley indicated, to get involved in the team, hopefully be on that team, and bring some some great community spirit, some great community pride, very positive uh, for the community. So on behalf of council, uh, I am uh, very supportive of this as well. And I'm going to call the question on the motion. All those in favor, any opposed, that motion is carried. The next item is the bylaw. It's been moved by Councilor King, seconded by Councilor Durley, the Council of the Town of Pelham having given due consideration of the following bylaw as amended, do now read a first and second time and do pass, and that the mayor and clerk are hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws as amended. Bylaw 3521, 2014, being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute a license agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Pelham and the Pelham Pirates Junior Hockey Club, Inc., for the use and occupation of the licensed arena on certain terms and conditions set out in the agreement. Comments or questions to that? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And um, we do have a, we're now able to sign that agreement. We did put the table forward in anticipation of that. And I would ask uh, members of council, should they wish to come behind, and uh, Mr. Toffolo and Mr. Sinclair uh, to uh, come forward and you can sign the agreement.
Thanks, Ray. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, members of council, for that. Yes. Now to the uh, rest of the agenda. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is a uh, presentation from our drainage superintendent, Mr. Jackson, whom we heard from earlier regarding the drainage maintenance program. Mr. Jackson, if you wouldn't mind uh, the report, and I believe, members of council, there was a, a report or a PowerPoint presentation that Mr. Jackson uh, provided that was on your desk. And also a, a map of the drainage. Mr. Jackson, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, just draw your attention over to the PowerPoint presentation. I was asked to uh, kind of prepare a presentation to kind of show um, how we're going to go about uh, addressing some of the drainage issues that we have and to continue to maintain the municipal drains that are already in existence. And uh, Correct me if I'm wrong on some of the information, um, but uh, it's a work in progress. Mr. Jackson, you're just new uh, to, to the drainage superintendent role, so thank you very much. And you, just a, about a few months, so thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to kind of explain municipal drains. Um, this description is from uh, the OMACRA site, that's Ontario uh, Ministry of, of Food and Agriculture. Uh, physically, a municipal drain is simply a drainage system, uh, much like a storm drainage system. Uh, most municipal drains are either ditches or closed systems, such as pipes and tiles buried in the ground. Uh, they can also include structures, such as dikes and berms, pump stations, uh, buffer strips, grass waterways. I won't read the whole thing there. Um, if you look into the, uh, the drawing that's on there right now, it kind of shows uh, a, a receiving water course, basically, that's where the outlet is being provided or the low point, uh, usually a natural water course or a stream. Uh, it shows there the heavy dark line is the uh, is a municipal drain that is constructed underneath the uh, drainage act. Uh, most municipal drains uh, were constructed to improve drainage on agricultural land by serving um, as a discharge point for private uh, drainage systems. Uh, a lot of the times uh, it'll look like a roadside ditch, um, but it also provides drainage for residential lots, churches, industrial or commercial uh, facilities. Uh, I'll just continue to move on with that one. Um, the municipal drains uh, that we have in 
Pelham right now. Uh, for visual purposes, I did divide uh, Pelham into two sections, South Pelham and North Pelham. Uh, currently, uh, Pelham has seven municipal drains in total. Here I have a little typo in there. Uh, the south section has six municipal drains. It's, it's not very uh, discernible from there. Um, Point works. This is the nun drain here. Uh, this one here, I believe, is the Swayze drain, which has two branches and a main branch at the bottom. I know it identifies Swayze here. I still need to read into the report a little bit more, but I believe, uh, okay, this is Disher drain, and this is the two branches of the Ridgeville drain, and they empty into what's called the Big Creek drain, and I believe that this whole system here is supposed to be the Big Creek drain. And up to the northwest is the Keenan drain, which has a closed system and an open system and a couple branches. Uh, North Pelham, to my knowledge, has one municipal drain, which is the 15 mile creek drain. And really, it's an outlet for uh, West Lincoln into the 15 mile creek. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, there are no other municipal drains in the north area. Um, as you'll see later in the presentation, I believe we need more municipal drains. What road was that, Mr. Jackson, do you know, or Mr. Mr. Mantle, that that northern drain was on? It, it doesn't appear on the map that we received. The, the north drain is part of the, um, I think it's 15 Mile Creek. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, shows itself here as a dark green line coming in. From the West Lake, and this here is the boundary here, and it comes in. I believe this is a uh, that sawmill. That sawmill. Learn what's going on. I believe okay, it's exactly. about twenty down here, so it's, it's quite far enough through the um, NET campground site, just to the north of that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mantle. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Appreciate that. Go ahead, sir. Okay, uh, historically there was a, a maintenance plan in place to maintain and repair the municipal drains. However, in recent years, uh, the municipal drains have been slightly neglected. Um, it is recommended to establish uh, a five-year inspection plan and a seven-year maintenance plan. I know in some municipalities they just have uh, a maintenance plan, um, but really a, uh, an organized inspection plan is better to make sure that constantly looking at them and it should be more frequent than the seven years. They say seven years because usually that's when the vegetation grows back and there's a lot of siltation. Sometimes uh, municipal drains need to be cleaned two to three years um, just because of the, uh, the soil conditions in the area, sandy, loam areas. Definitely they silt up a little bit faster because of loose soils. Uh, other, um, they don't have vegetation that grows too quickly so it could be ten years for a municipal drain. Uh, but that is a, uh, that's the whole purpose of the inspection plan is to uh, continue to survey uh, the municipal drains. I do have here, uh, and you'll see in your packages, uh, just kind of a, a layout. This was uh, um, my idea of how these, uh, how this plan should be laid out. And it's, uh, it's not very systematic necessarily in saying, you know, uh, as you would see a schedule, like a, um, a construction schedule, a uh, Gantt chart or something like that. Uh, definitely I can do something like that and make it more visual, mm -hmm. um, so it's easier to follow. Uh, one of the main ones that I have, excuse me for a moment, is uh, a Swayze drain, which is uh, to begin, I believe it was August 5th, was the um, absolute start date for the contractor to begin on that one. So I have that one. Um, I have some, you know, the inspection dates I have mentioned on there the last time that the report, report was done on them. Um, just so happens that Spreet has done a lot of them. <laughs> it wasn't set up that way. Um, anyway, um, here I have the, the last time it was maintained, the last time it was inspected, uh, and then the proposed next time for the inspection, uh, and then it's kind of a self-explanatory in, in that time. So. Um, from that point on, the one that's being done this year, which is the Swayze drain, both west and east branches and the main branch, um, that one obviously will be inspected at the end. 
uh, and then uh, a five-year plan from then. But uh, I may want to keep a little bit closer eye on that one because I'm not overly familiar with how the soils uh, erode in this area or don't erode. Uh, and now I'm just going to get into the miscellaneous drainage, which is always the fun topic. Uh, recently, Miss Pally has suffered a few large storm events. I guess a few large ones might define that. Um, <laughs> as many people have been getting phone calls nonstop as soon as the rain starts coming, even if it's light, because of the fears of damages that have occurred. Uh, several cases uh, it, that have occurred in multiple municipalities throughout Ontario. Um, I do supervise two other municipalities who have suffered uh, heavy damages and flooding. Uh, most of the drainage systems are designed to handle what is called a two-year storm event, meaning that in any two-year uh, period, uh, the storm water levels can be expected to reach a certain volume in, in a one-hour period. Uh, it is roughly estimated that to date, uh, the Niagara region has experienced five and ten-year storm events recently. So we have to try and uh, think a little bit outside the box, perhaps in the designs to consider a little bit larger systems to handle higher volumes of water or dual systems with low flow or high flow, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, one of the ones that I did get, uh, I got a call from a resident on Roland Road, which is uh, just getting to the short hills. Um, he had a little bit of driveway erosion and, you know, he's got a, a very nice vehicle and it seems to hit the bottom because of the some of the eroding that was going on, and then I noticed downstream that uh, the municipality had to replace a culvert that was completely washed out, and that seemed to be more of an alarming thing to myself, but um, I do not pass uh, anyone's concerns by far. And then I did take a look at uh, Sulphur Springs here, just out of curiosity. Um, that was a, a roads issue, and it was closed, and I would say I did venture and <laughs> take a look at that one. Um, you know, those are two huge events that uh, couldn't really be predicted that something like that was ever going to happen because mm -hmm. of um, the topography in that area. It seems the water just doesn't sit anywhere, so it doesn't normally become a drainage issue. Usually when you have sitting water, then there's a problem. Uh, flowing water, people usually just kind of ignore. Um, and we're learning that uh, it's, it's, it's more of a safety concern if water is flowing in high velocity. Um, the other one that other people might be um, more familiar with, the Chandler Road sinkhole or washout that was happening. Um, my first fear is that it was a municipal dream, it would be my responsibility, but <laughs> it was not. It was uh, a tributary to that one, but that does still concern me because it does empty into a municipal drain and drainage as a whole in the community uh, still is my concern. So um, taking, taking a look at that system that was set up there. I did visit the site uh, with the previous drainage superintendent because uh, he wanted to take a look at it and uh, I do consult with him once in a while because of um, uh, his history and his knowledge of the area. It's very difficult to see here, but this is um, the upstream, so the inlet side. Uh, you can't really see too much here. It didn't seem like there was much erosion happening, but the road surface is, is completely gone there. This is the downstream side, and you can see now that culvert is a good eight to 10 inches off of the ground, and this is, this is the roadway material right here. Um, I do have some concerns with the uh, twin culvert design only because water in an open system is flowing across this whole area and we're trying to push it through uh, this closed system. And that, that's what happens is the water starts to flow in between, washing out that material, creating the sinkholes in the roadways. Um, another one uh, that I came across, 650 Memorial Drive. Um, there's a dry well right at the corner of Sunset and Memorial Drive. The water does go into there, but again, these storm events are a little bit larger, so that, that dry sump just fills up and overflows into uh, the resident's property, uh, creating some flooding in their garage area because this seems to be a, a low-lying area. Everything else around it is a high point. Um, 
there are ways to, to address that. And then just down the road here, um, there's a cross culvert here. It seems that in recent history, um, they filled in their property and that culvert just, the water's coming across here and it just stops and pools right there. It causes, that's a more of an emergency situation for the road um, because if the water continues to sit there and washes out the road and it's underwater, someone crosses through there, it's, it's quite dangerous. Uh, 1941 Balfour Street, this one here is uh, uh, anyone who's been part of uh, staff has probably heard of this property. And can you, know, you point out that? Can you point out the location on with your pointer? Okay, sorry, this is Balfour Street. Yep, and this is Mettler and Cream Street. Um, this is uh, J.M. Peters Nursery. Uh, so, this is 1941 Balfour right here and there's been some severe flooding into that area mm. uh, and upon investigation and speaking to the owner of the nursery the water flows in this direction across everything it comes from this land goes across comes through here goes across and what's been happening is the water has been collected here runs down comes along and into this property and there is a system that was put in place to try and handle that uh, this system is larger than the downstream itself. There is a small six inch tile here. Um, the cross culvert is 18 inch. So just by math there, we're, we're a little short uh, <laughs> by about 12 inches on the outlet side of things. So the water does eventually get away and everything dries up and it looks nice there, but uh, that, that outlet is not sufficient to hold, handle that water. Uh, this is just some pictures um, of their property during a rain event. Um, even up to uh, one inch of rain immediately floods the area, comes across here, floods into the garage area. Uh, when your driveway has a rippled water effect, it's probably not a good thing. The water is coming in at a high velocity and a large volume all at one time. And this is just looking at the, the back part of the driveway here. Some of the solutions, uh, although all problems deal with drainage as a whole, the solutions uh, for each can vary depending on the level of responsibility and liability, uh, meaning an emergency situation or something that uh, can go through regular uh, due process. Uh, 1941 Belfour, I believe, requires uh, an approved outlet that can handle the volume of water that flows uh, from adjacent lands. Uh, forming a municipal drain is a practical solution. Uh, 650 Memorial Drive and 1188 Sunset Drive uh, can possibly be resolved when Sunset Road goes through its reconstruction, possibly by curbs and storm systems, but that's up to uh, staff and council to decide uh, what direction they want to go with that. Uh, Roland Road and Sulphur Springs, um, obviously they require new crossings because they've, they've washed out and some of them have been replaced. Um, my suggestion is to have steel plate arches or possibly a uh, concrete arch. And you can see by the, the pictures here that in an open system or a ditch system that remains open has continuous flow. Um, closing the system, um, that's where you create your, your issues. Um, Chandler Road washout uh, was replaced. However, a twin culvert design, I believe, uh, is gonna produce similar results with heavy rain events in the future. Uh, just because of its its design as a whole. Um, like I was saying earlier, open systems or channel designs uh, present uh, trapezoidal cross section, meaning that you know it's wider at the top and more narrow at the bottom, and it's open and free flowing. Uh, most road crossings are closed systems like culverts and pipes. Although a culvert or other type of crossing calculates the same volume of water, there is a restriction in the flow due to the two systems interacting. Um, maintaining an open system via a wide span bottomless arch uh, will lessen or even eliminate erosion. Again, that's just my personal opinion and experience uh, speaking to that one. Uh, a lot of these designs you'd have to consult probably an engineer uh, to ensure that you know, you're addressing those situations uh, appropriately and affordably. I uh, hear just an example that I got off of the internet. Here is the small road crossing that was existing. And uh, you know they wanna do an expansion, so they were thinking twin bridges, but instead they put in a steel plate arch. 
with concrete footings, kept the stream open, and then built the road over top of it. And it's environmentally friendly. Uh, these open uh, open culverts, at the bottom culverts, uh, they provide a good place for fish to uh, spend when it's hot and it keeps it cool and it's very fish friendly. Uh, you can, you know, put in environmental features like uh, strategically placed rocks or that would be uh, refuge areas for fish to hide behind during high flow so they don't get washed downstream. And that's the end of the presentation. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for your presentation. I wonder if any members of council have any questions for our presenter. Councilor Rubiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I have a couple. Um, <clears throat> the first one is, is, is just a technical one, I guess, with respect to uh, a part of the presentation you made. Uh, I think you've differentiated between, um, I think you called it a closed system, a culvert that's round, is set at the level of the bottom of the ditch you're saying that even though it may have the capacity to handle um, the projected uh, requirement, mm -hmm. it'll erode, it, 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 it creates a problem. Just, just explain that a bit, bit more because I find that very interesting. I find that to be the kind of culvert we have most often in town, though I may be. It's, it's the typical um, type of crossing through you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize. Um, it's a typical crossing because a, a pipe can provide some substantial strength. It's fairly inexpensive. It does provide um, a steady flow and low flow volume. So uh, a light rain, um, it doesn't have any issues because the low flow is, is basically, it's, it's continuous and free flowing. Um, when you start getting into higher volumes, um, the, the open system itself continues to flow freely, but then when you're starting to compress it into uh, a closed system, the water is still meeting the other, the outside of the pipe. So that's usually where your erosion starts to happen. Uh, you can put in erosion protection and things like that, but the water will still find uh, its uh, path of least resistance. Um, you will eventually still get some of the washouts. Um, it happens over time. It's not an immediate danger to all the culverts, so there's no, I don't say that to what we have in place right now is going to cause any danger to anyone. Uh, it's just looking forward in the future when we have to go through a replacement uh, to try and come up with the most practical and economical design. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may mm -hmm. follow up. Please. So in, in your view, I guess, um, uh, the, the right design of culvert ought to be an element within, I guess, the, the standards that the town would be using when designing roads and the water courses and things like that. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I do believe that the municipality in a whole, like uh, the engineering department, um, uh, public works, uh, definitely kind of um, direct the path that we want to go in uh, when it comes to designing it. So when developments uh, are, are being put into place and designs are there, then we take all those aspects into consideration. Um, you know, we talk about water quality and, and water main design and sewer design and uh, you know making sure that we're following the right regulations for that one and we kind of put drainage off uh, to the side and say each property yeah they're at, everything's at the right slope the water gets off fine and you know we put it into a storm system it's good and we don't think of the other small problems that eventually you get phone calls for uh, when driveways are heaving because of the water gets underneath the culvert freezes and, and lifts the culvert there's there's so many different aspects to drainage than just, you know, making sure that the water isn't sitting in one specific spot. So there, you know, it's it's a matter of putting <coughs> something into place and then uh, coming up with a, a philosophy of dealing with water as a municipality. Thank you. And, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and further to that, then I suppose where we have those, those uh, observations and complaints of instances where the culvert through the road is acting more as a, as a as a dam than a than a pipe. Even though the the, the the culvert may be of the right diameter, I guess if it's the wrong shape, that that's the kind of effect it would have. It would stop the water, and it would just 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 create uh, a, a pool behind it. 
uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I hate to mention other municipalities, uh, especially during council meeting. However, um, uh, in Wayne Fleet, the road superintendent is going through when they're replacing their culverts. You know, the design capacity is for a certain size pipe. They would prefer to enlarge the pipe and set it, recess it into the ground so that the actual size of the pipe is matching the actual ditch profile and, and the cross section. So it's uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, take the design into consideration and go a step above that and trying to create uh, easier flowing water. Interesting. And, and I, to you, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I take it you've shared these views with, uh, with, with our public works group and they will have the benefit of that wisdom. I believe that uh, I've spoken to a couple of the members and not really uh, overly express my opinion and uh, I think it's just a matter of taking the time to, to sit down and, and talk to them about that and you know not that my idea my knowledge is the only way and that I know all the answers uh, I also glean off of the other members of staff uh, to educate myself at the same time. Thank you. So it's a possible solution. Go ahead, Councillor. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, uh, just to change subject a little bit, um, um, it, it's been, been suggested to me uh, at, at various times that maybe uh, as, a, as a town we could, we could do with the benefit of a, of a drainage committee. Are you familiar with drainage committees? And do you feel that that would be helpful to us or to you in, in looking at our systems? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, I am familiar with a, a drainage committee. Uh, there is one in another municipality that I do uh, work for. Um, I interact with them quite well, and it, you know, at times it, it personally it seemed like it would be a hindrance at times because I come up with a plan and idea and I want to do something. But um, they're usually members of the community. They know their drainage. They know um, the land, the lay of the land. Uh, they're they're competent people, and I believe it helps me to redirect if I'm stuck in a system uh, it kind of helps uh, their interaction with the public would be uh, well wanted and, and needed uh, to help redirect and make sure that uh, we're focusing on uh, the needs of the community uh, as a whole that could be overlooked by one person and, and if I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, so, so do you believe that we in Pelham would benefit by using a, a drainage committee? I believe that the town would benefit uh, with a drainage committee. And I know that myself, I would also benefit from that so that uh, there's, there are things that aren't overlooked out of just uh, getting through habit of, of dealing with the day-to-day. And I know that the agricultural community in Pelham um, has a strong voice and uh, would help to keep things on track to take care of uh, our infrastructure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Council. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Mayor, at some point when it's appropriate, I, I wonder whether we might ask staff to come back to us with a recommendation, a report and recommendation with regard to drainage committees, whether it's useful, how they would be constructed, how they'd be used, that sort of thing. Thank you, Councillor. I think um, later on in policies and priorities, yes, uh, we do have a consideration of uh, committees for the future term, and that that could be an opportunity to do so and raise it there. Great, I will raise it there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Other questions uh, for a drainage superintendent based on his report? So. Just, just proceeding there, you are starting the, uh, you said in August, you're starting the Swayze, yeah. Swayze drain, excellent. It, I guess something that's been, when one looks at the chart, uh, a number of the, the drains the, in terms of the last time of maintenance are in and around that, that time period. So the Swayze was last cleaned out, I believe it says here, 2002. And there's a few of them that was also 2000, which was the Ridgeville, the Keenan 2001, the Big Creek 2002. Um, so a lot of them were done within a specific period of time, and yet we're now cleaning them out, sort of over a over a tiered area. Is is there a, is there a reason for that when you've 
you know, you, because you've inspected them, that that's the time that you're proposing, or is what, what's the rationale for for that? When so many of them were done with that period, why wouldn't they be done now during the next uh, you know next year or something like that? Mr. Worship, um, just that the idea of the plan itself, um, just noting that uh, through other uh, municipalities that have programs in place, uh, the typical system for maintenance has a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't just want to bundle them all together um, because of the financial burden, because they, the cost up front uh, when you're doing maintenance, obviously you have to tender it out and hire a contractor. And up front, the municipality has to bear that cost, the burden of the cost, before they can bill it out. Okay. So uh, I didn't want to put a strain on the municipality. However, so the, if the treasurer municipality talked to you about like cash to, flow. Is that correct? <laughs> if the municipality <laughs> would like to take care of it all in in one year, then by all means, they have the right to to do that to put their monies towards that. Uh, I know that uh, the municipality usually has m multiple things uh, yes, to look at on their plate with the, taking care of their roads and, and their parks and, and everything else. So. Uh, it was just strictly on a uh, consideration basis for the financial burden. Thank you. But some of them, the Ridgeville drain, which you have proposed to be cleaned out next year, and the Keenan drain in 16, those were inspected this spring. So you're confident that the drain will be fine until that period of time? Is that that's what you're rec recommending here? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, you say, Mr. From, Mayor. From the, <laughs> from the, uh, the inspection... Uh, that I've done was because of phone calls that I've received and, and issues that have uh, occurred even more recently uh, mm -hmm. and going on site and reviewing them saying yes they need to be maintained um, they don't present any immediate danger um, so I mean the water does eventually flow and, and get away there's not a lot of standing water um, which you know, it would indicate to me that the water eventually is, it's moving, mm -hmm. it, you know, in the direction that it should be. Uh, however, I do see problems that are going to start to arise, uh, you know, uh, when it, agricultural um, business is trying to put in what's called a drainage tile to mm -hmm. drain their land. They outlet to the municipal drain. Mm -hmm. well, the bottom of the drain is now a foot to two feet higher than what it was. And, and they're unable to reach that elevation. Uh, that they require. So knowing that, um, that's a recommendation to, to go ahead and, and do that systematically and do one every year. And it's possible that some of them just may need a spot cleaning mm -hmm. uh, in certain areas so that the, you know, the finances are, are not going to be as uh, onerous. So then we can uh, maybe couple that with another one. Um, I just put it into a plan. It's definitely up for uh, review and comment and uh, opinions of, of other people to see uh, with council or with other staff members to say, you know, perhaps we need to do this one. Uh, and again, if I could go back to uh, Councillor Rubiak's statement to, you know, is a drainage committee required? Perhaps that's a committee that can, you know, help review that situation and say, you know, we've had a number of complaints and concerns with this drain rather than the one you have on the plan. Can we move that one? And and then I put that recommendation forward, and, and we can make a decision from there. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. I appreciate you answering those questions and all of the questions that members of council have. Any other questions for Mr. Jackson? Thank you very much for your presentation, for your work. Uh, I do have a motion here. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, that the issue summary report and presentation regarding the drainage maintenance program be received and the council adopt the drain inspection the drainage inspection program as proposed and council adopt the drain maintenance program as proposed and the council adopts an annual drainage open house maybe mr jackson you could tell us a little bit more about the open house through you your worship uh, to council uh, Forgive me for not putting it into my presentation. Uh, it is something that um, uh, the municipality of Waynefleet does um, traditionally to invite uh, members of the public uh, to come and meet with the drainage superintendent or the drainage committee um, just in a, a non-formal setting. 
uh, sometimes there's a presentation to show, you know, what the program is and the ideas for this year, um, and then have an open discussion uh, through most of it, the interaction with the community. Sometimes the you know, <coughs> MPCA is invited just to, as a as a friendly, you know, this is what we're doing, you know, in conjunction, and you know. Uh, you know, these agencies aren't out there to, to bite people. They're, we're out there to work together and, and you know, uh, have a better thriving community through it. Um, they've been positive, very positive. Um, it, you know, it, it depends on what council feels and, and thinks. You know, mm -hmm. some may not be comfortable with having a, a public forum for stuff like that, and possibly just putting it maybe something on the website to, mm -hmm. and so that people can address it that way. Um, it's just a personal opinion and, and, and a good feeling interacting with the public is, yeah, is probably a, a good idea. Well, I think uh, interacting with the public is one of the, the uh, goals of uh, this council. And uh, as we saw tonight, there's a lot of interest with drains through the municipality. So, um, but thank you for explaining the open house. Any other questions, comments regarding this? I think it is a good idea. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you again for your presentation, for your work. We look forward to that uh, Swayze drain being uh, cleaned out and the other drains moving forward. Thank you for your presentation. Councillor Beatty would normally be next on the agenda, but he doesn't have his report regarding uh, the region because we don't have a regional council meeting until this Thursday. So we can anticipate a report from Councillor Beatty at our next meeting. Now we'll move on to the balance of the agenda. First is adoption of minutes. It's been moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Durley, that the following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Minutes of the special meeting of Council of July 7th, minutes of the regular meeting of Council of July 7th, and minutes of the special meeting of Council of July 14th. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is consent agenda items to be considered in block. Are there any uh, items, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us, are there any items that uh, members would like to lift for separate consideration? Councilor Durley. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Number 11.5.2 with appendix is one and two please. Thank you Councilor. Others? Moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, that the following consent agenda items be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. Item 1, recommendations of Committee of the Whole of July 7th and the recommendations of the public meeting under the Planning Act of July 14th. Minutes of the Committee of the Whole of July 7th and minutes of those public meetings under the Planning Act. Staff reports of a routine nature or action, there aren't any, they, they've all been lifted. Um, Council, uh, sorry, action correspondence of a routine nature. The first is from Mr. B. <coughs> Wall uh, regarding the East Fawn Hill draft plan of subdivision. I think we heard from Mr. Wall at the, at the public meeting and it's that the correspondence from Brian Wall regarding the East Fawn Hill draft plan of subdivision be received and referred to uh, community planning and development staff for information and consideration in future reports. The second is by Richard Ely of Foss Road Culvert. So the recommendation is that the culvert, the correspondence from Richard Ely regarding the culvert crossing Foss Road be received and referred to the Public Works and Utilities staff for investigation and report. We do have some information items of correspondence. We have a thank you letter from Nicholas Gucci. He was one of our recipients of the Town of Pelham uh, scholarship. Councilor, Councilor Durley has lifted the correspondence from Mr. and Mrs. Hertz and Mr. Uh, Frank Hertz. Uh, there's an item there from Tree Canada regarding Glen Green Green School Future Award. And then finally, some committee minutes for information. Committee of Adjustment minutes of June 3rd and Summerfest committee minutes of July 2nd and July 9th. Any items, questions, comments regarding any of those items under? Go ahead, Councillor Rubiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think I, I circulated an email earlier with respect to, to the subject. It has to do with the uh, Committee of the Whole uh, uh, minutes from July 7th, particularly with reference to uh, uh, Public Works report <coughs> and uh, Fenwick beautification uh, and the comments that were there. And my, my, my question, I'm, I'm sorry, is there? Go ahead. No, I'm just, 
conversing with the clerk about uh, procedure. Go ahead. Thank you. If, if this is the wrong place or time, tell me now because I'm going to get started. <laughs> it, it, it may have been lifted, but go ahead. That's fine. Go ahead, Councillor. That's fine. No, I, I, I'm not sure that I intended it to be lifted. I just wanted to, to, to ask the question. Okay. Uh, but in any case, the, the issue has to do with uh, a particular aspect of uh, the revitalization. It has to do with the hydro pole located on Canberra Road at uh, 777, I think it is, on, on Canberra Road. This is one of the series of poles that is located on the street side of the sidewalk and is viewed by uh, at least a number of people within Fenwick as being a hazard. There was some uh, question with regard to why in the, uh, the redesign the pole was being left where it was, and I think that the response that I received uh, when, I, when I questioned that was, was that there was, there was a, an inability to, to uh, receive an easement with which to do it. In discussions subsequent to, uh, to that, uh, it, it's been brought to my attention that, in fact, an easement could be had. I'm just wondering whether it's, it's, it's uh, possible to revisit that issue and uh, determine whether it would be wise or uh, feasible to, uh, to make a change in the location of that pole from the street side to the property side in order to widen the road and, uh, and, and, and uh, allow us to, uh, to have a, a, a better result. Okay, let's hear from Mr. Mantle. Mr. Thank you. Mantle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the hydro pole has already been installed. Um, it's uh, connected to the distribution system for the for Hydro One. Uh, we questioned uh, relocation of that pole, and it has an approximate cost of ten thousand dollars. It's also outside of the beautification area. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, it had nothing to do with the easement or obtaining an easement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No. The the hydro, we didn't require an easement. It was an issue with the owners of the house um, at that location. Uh, they wanted a tree removed. There were other issues that they were looking at. And uh, to move the project ahead and not hold up Hydro One, the intent was just simply leave the pole where it is. It, <coughs> it's similar to all the other poles on the street. Uh, they're all on that same side. And again, it's outside the beautification area. Thank you. Councillor? Yeah, th th thank you, uh, Mr. Mandel, for the. Uh, for the clarification. Okay, thank you. Anything further on that? Uh? No, uh, not, not at this moment. Okay. Uh, thank you. Others to uh, items under consent? Just there was a request, and this is why I asked staff to uh, put this on the agenda from Tree Canada regarding the Glenny Green School, or sorry, the Green School Green Future Award, not Glenny Green School, but uh, um, Yale Crosley School, there was a request that uh, somehow there be a link to the town's website and perhaps uh, staff can facilitate that in that uh, item of correspondence, if that's okay with council. Okay, thank you. So we'll do that and I will, uh, if there's no further comments or questions, I will call the question. All those in favor, any opposed, that motion is carried. Councillor Durley, you uh, lifted an item regarding a potential cap bylaw. Uh, this seems to be a recurring situation, Mr. Mayor. There are uh, many people who have pets, and pets are great. Uh, however, when somebody else's pet is making a mess in your yard, that becomes another issue. And it, again, it surfaces in uh, two letters. I did have a, a conversation with one of the uh, letter writers, and uh, it stated that a uh, neighbor to one side has two cats, a neighbor to another side has several cats. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's a bylaw for a number of cats that you could have. I know we had a long discussion that uh, um, just a couple of years ago, I guess, about this trying to get a cat bylaw, and, and apparently we could make a cat bylaw, but to enforce would be uh, almost impossible, and that becomes a situation. However, the situation continues and seems to get worse, and we're hearing from different people all the time. I'm just wondering if we can direct staff to investigate how can we, uh, at least in a rural area, I know one of the arguments was in the, uh, in the, or the rural area, there was uh, feral cats, and, and nobody could claim ownership to them, so you couldn't do anything about it. In a particular case of being in an urban section, it, it may be easier to identify the owner. And 
Casey needs a dog license, why doesn't a cat need a, a cat license? That That is the question that has been asked by many, many people and uh, certainly, like I say, with it surfacing just about every year, uh, we should do something about it, and I'm just wondering if we can. So I'd like to direct staff to uh, to investigate if there is a solution to this, uh, if only for the urban areas of town where where it goes. Because apparently in the ur rural areas it would be it would be impossible to do anything. But certainly, is there a chance to do something in the in the urban parts? Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Durley. So your motion is to receive the item of course items of correspondence and direct staff to investigate and report back to council. Yes, that correct? If, if there is a solution and, and what it can be and how we can implement okay. it. Okay, yes. sounds like a great golden egg. Mm -hmm. Wonder if there's uh, any a, a seconder for that motion, Councillor Papp. You're quite right, Councillor Durley. This has come back. It's almost like it has nine lives, uh, coming back <laughs> yes. uh, to, to this council. And sorry for the pun. Uh, any other comments on the uh, Councillor Durley, Councillor Papp's motion to receive, Councillor Lane. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a comment is, uh, in fact, I think that this can be a, a situation that needs to be dealt with in the rural area as well, uh, because I know there are situations in the rural area where uh, there are cats you can, uh, they may be feral or whatever, but you can identify sort of where they're coming from and they're still they're still out there. So I, I think it uh, is something that could be looked at for rural area as well. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Others? So the motion is from Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Papp, that we receive the correspondence and direct staff to investigate and report back to Council. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Now we move to reports from members of Council. I have a a written brief report, but I do want to uh, to certainly comment, uh, and it is just one item, and it's regarding Summerfest from this year. As I wrote in the report, thank you, thank you, thank you to the Pelham Summerfest 2014 committee for organizing an amazing, amazing four-day event. Um, Councillor Kersey isn't here, uh, but he certainly uh, did a great job representing council, chairing that committee. The committee included Todd Barber representing the Downtown Beautification Committee, B. Clark representing the Pelham Active Transportation Committee, and, and boy, were there a lot of activities there to, that one could be active with. Um, Kathleen Goodman representing the Pelham Welland Chamber of Commerce. John Wink representing the Pelham Business Association. And of course, staff involvement and, and leadership, and that's Vicki Van Ravensway and Sally Yeager, town staff, and other many, many other town staff who were involved in this event. Uh, I asked staff for a, a total of the uh, those that attended and I think we had uh, 6400 for Thursday which was a huge increase uh, over previous years and uh, just a great great event uh, that evening and and certainly more than double nearly triple what they uh, normally receive on a Thursday for uh, for a normal band shell concert series uh, I know that the food was uh, in, it appeared in short supply, uh, and people they were fed, but uh, they did have to wait a little bit longer than normal. So great, great crowd that evening. Friday, seven thousand people, which is a huge, huge increase over previous years. Um, I guess we are a part of the country music and the toe tapping, uh, and and uh, interested in that. Um, and again, the weather was perfect uh, for that, and it 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 felt like last year's. Uh, Saturday evening. Saturday was a little light because of uh, it almost turned into a bit of drizzle fest to coin a phrase um, uh, But I understand that we did have 7,000 on Saturday through the day and uh, I understand that it was about half of those 3,500 were in the evening and certainly once uh, um, I I attended later on after 9 o'clock and there was a great crowd that stayed well into the wee hours uh, of the morning uh, myself included so it was a great uh, a great time and Sunday I know that uh, members of council were serving breakfast and we served believe it or not even though it's felt like like double this we served 400 breakfast lots of people enjoying breakfast and I know they had to go back for additional supplies and Ms. Van Ravensway estimates that it's up to a thousand people were there on Sunday enjoying the beautiful weather the bouncy castles um, all those activities so by my calculation about 21 22,000 people participating in the uh, four-day festival. Um, all members of council were there. Um, just a, a, a great, great event. 
um, really bringing the community together. Um, I had the opportunity just as, a, <coughs> as an aside, I guess, to speak to one of the vendors who was from out of town. And I said, you, you too bad about the, uh, the weather. And, he, and this was sort of as it was about downpouring at, uh, at 4 o'clock. And he said, you know what? He said, people want to be here. You can see this. That even though it's drizzling, they were here all day. They were talking to me. They were getting engaged. They really want to be here. You have a successful event. And I think these numbers, especially on the Saturday, when that many people come because they want to participate in it, really, really shows that... Uh, that the committee and staff have put together a fabulous event for our community, and it's one of the one of the items that we have that can really make our community proud and strong. Um, so many, so many compliments. I know members of council received that. I received it on behalf of the committee and council. So, congratulations and thank you, thank you, thank you, to the members of the committee that put this on. There's so many volunteers, all of the staff that that work so diligently on it. That just seemed they were here around the clock, um, especially Miss Van Ravensway. Uh, so thank you very much, and, and other members that were volunteering and working, the, the, the chief, the treasurer, uh, other, other members uh, as well. So thank you very much. I do want to express on behalf of Council deep appreciation for the many, many others that uh, helped to ensure it was a successful festival, especially the members of our service club. So the, the Fenwick Lions Club, the Fawn Hill and District Kinsman Club, the Fawn Hill Lions Club, and the Rotary Club of Fawn Hill working on the, uh, the beer pavilion. Uh, on, on Saturday and uh, being there through the rain. Uh, St. John's Ambulance, who was there through the entire weekend, uh, should a need arise, and uh, I'm not aware of any, so I think they did a great job. Pelham Firefighters, who were also there uh, spraying water, and they, I tried to stay away from them because I knew they were ready to angle those, uh, those hoses at me, uh, but just interacting with the kids uh, all day and continuing to do that even through the drizzle on Saturday and also being a presence uh, all through the festival should the need arise. Members of the Pelham Active Transportation Committee that were there diligently, they, they showed me that it was kind of waterlogged, but they were getting the uh, suggestions for how to make our community even more active and uh, how might we do that. And they had little stickies on that, and we can um, look forward to that uh, coming forward to us uh, at budget, perhaps. Uh, Pat Haftar and the members of the Pelham Art Festival and the artists... Uh, Tremendous. Uh, they st stuck it out again through uh, inclement weather, and uh, as was said in the paper today, I think they they sold every day, and uh, it was a great great event. Members of the Mayor's, Mayor's Youth Advisory Council who helped out, especially with some of the jumpy castles, uh, Fawn Hill Bandshell Committee and Farmers Market Committee, uh, who <coughs> again really stepped up and and were taking advantage of the great crowd that they have on the Thursday evening. Town of Palm staff. I've already mentioned them. Thank you so much. And then finally, uh, and, and certainly not last, but not least, uh, the friends and supporters of the Pelham Summerfest. Um, if this event, somebody was asking again, how much does this cost? The town is a is a diamond sponsor with our with our sponsorship that's approved each year for the budget. But there are so many others that offset those costs. And and if the town was to try to do this without the sponsors, I mean, it would cost us a pile of money. And I know that we would have uh, we're going to be having a report. On the overall budget, but you know the amount that we put in for the amount that that's uh, that's invested from the community is quite small. So thank you so much to the sponsors and to the friends of Summerfest, as they're called, uh, for ensuring that we have a, a wonderful, wonderful Summerfest. Th on behalf of council, thank you to all those sponsors. Thank you to all the volunteers, and we look forward to uh, hearing the report and many, many more years of Pelham Summerfest. Our next item is. Resolution. Oh, I, we actually have to receive my report. So uh, it's been moved by Councillor Lane, second by Councillor Durley. I appreciate the mover and the seconder that my report to Council for July 21st, 2014 be received for information. Comments or questions? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Councillors. Thanks again. It's, it's great to... There were, I, I should say, in addition to uh, you being there, members were volunteering as well. So thank you very much, members of Council. We're volunteering as well, so thank you very much for that. Now we're moving into bylaws. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, the Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due consideration to the following bylaws, do now read it first, second, third time, and do pass the same, and the Mayor Clerk be and are hereby, hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. Bylaw 3522 being a bylaw to assume the subdivision known as 177 Welland Road subdivision and to designate the streets. 
shown on registered plan 59M368 as public highways and to name the street accordingly. Two. Bylaw 3523, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 1136, 1987, as amended for lands associated on the east side of Poth Street, north of Chandler Road, legally described as Concession 12, Part Lot 8, 571 Poth Street. And bylaw 3524, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 1136, as amended for lands located on the north side of Weber Road east of Cream Street, legally described as Concession 13, Part Lot 10, RP 59R11739, Part 2, 523 Weber Road to site-specific M1-248 zoning. Comments, questions on any of those bylaws? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor King, that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time and pass. Bylaw 3525 being a bylaw to adopt, ratify, and confirm the proceedings of Council of the Town of Pelham in its regular meeting held on the 21st day of July 2014. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor King, that this regular meeting of Council be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday, August 5th, because of the holiday unless sooner called by the mayor. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. We'll take a five minute break before we start committee. Thank you, members. <coughs> Dave, to, uh, Perfect. Oh, with you and me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah. Did they give you the report yes. or the ruling? Yeah. Good. They're good. Yeah. We deal. My wife has dealt with yogurts for years. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But I, I stop in every Friday afternoon. Good. 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 Good.